Hey guys, so the last video I left off with kind of halfway through the first day. So this is going into the second session of the day. My camera actually died, so this is recorded from an iPhone and I'm doing the voiceover on my phone, so it might not sound as good. But we have the lead on. She learned how to step on it a couple times as you saw in the last video and now I'm working on her giving to the pressure. I don't care if it's just by her completely turning her head with softness or moving her shoulders or her hips or in some way giving to the pressure so you can see she's kind of just leaning against it she's really resisting and putting all of that weight in that outside shoulder so instead of trying to pull her straight forward to lead I'm trying to pull her to the side which gives me a better leverage and it's also easier for a horse to get off balance that way rather than pull them straight forward and you can tell that I also have my whip in my right hand and I'm trying to drive her forward so I have some energy and momentum to work with because she's just kind of stuck and standing still. And now we weren't having much luck with that so I'm keeping the pressure on the lead rope being sure I don't release and now I'm asking her shoulder to step over that way I get some sort of movement from her. Good. So I don't want to get into a fight with her, but I need some sort of her body part to move. I can't have her just standing there resisting against it. So I got a little bit of motion forward and she actually learned how to give the pressure backwards first, which means pulling forward doesn't make as much sense to her because when she was trotting around and would step on the lead rope, it would pull her back for her to stop moving. So you saw when she trotted off there and she felt her nose hit the end of the lead rope, she respected it a little bit more. See, she understands to stop pretty well from that. But now we have to focus on getting those shoulders freed up, that hip freed up, and I need her to figure out how to lead forward with me. So it seems like we're able to get the shoulders best right now. I want to make sure to give her big releases too because even though it seems like she's just planting her feet and not working really hard, there's a lot of thinking going on in her brain and I want to make sure I reward when she really tries for me. Oh yeah. Break up those sticky feet. So I'm going to keep waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm trying to have her give. Give with her hip. Give with something. This is a tricky part because I keep trying to pulse my lead rope so she doesn't just sit on it because I know she could sit there forever, but if I pulse it, that's a little bit more of something to move off of. And now I'm trying to get her to move her shoulder over as that last resort kind of deal. I'm like, hey, you got to move into the pressure with your body. Good. Even though it was just a tiny step, it was in the right direction. So I'm going to make sure to reward for it. Here again, we have her wanting to take off with her shoulder and pull me around, but luckily I'm able to get that leverage and she can respond enough with her nose to give into it. So we have the hind end moving, which is good to see. Good to see that I'll be able to get those hind quarters to yield eventually, but I really want her to think about giving forward into the pressure. So I used sending in my sending exercise to get her to understand walking forward with me and I use the rail line to help this but I wanted to break uh, day one up into two sessions because I figured it was a lot of stuff going on and I wanted to make sure that you know I could get it all included so you guys didn't get bored and have the videos not be too long So she's starting to understand moving forward, but she is very heavy on my hand. And it may be because I just have her in like a nylon breakaway halter, but I think she's kind of more of a stubborn freeze type mare right now. Her other tactic is just backing up very slowly. She never runs backwards or tries to spin out of it, but she likes to back up very slow and kind of thinks I won't notice, but I make sure to keep that pressure on the rope and not release until she takes one step forward. Yeah. 
so although we're having some fighting there, you may have heard me say in the video that she's giving to pressure better, which means you can see that her nose is turning and she's not totally ripping that lead rope away from me when we were running sideways. So I like to see that, that even though she was spooking or nervous, that she can still kind of stick with me. And we're just getting very little baby steps now, but it's definitely progress that I'm able to stand in front of her. I don't know if I said this in the last video, but I'm not ready to completely turn my back on this mare yet. She feels a little bit like roulette, but just not as expressive. But if you're next to her, you can kind of feel what I'm talking about. It's not so easy to see though, but she definitely at some points is like, I'm not so sure about this human. I don't know if I should challenge her or not. So when we started the next session of the day, I just went in and saw how my approach could be. I couldn't tell if she was shaking her head as resistance here or if she just had a bug around her. So that was a little bit better of an approach. We only had her moving her feet a little bit at the start. So then after that, I took out the whip and I believe my intention was just to pat her with it, but she decided to move off. So I'm just gonna push her around some. One thing this mare is really good at is looking at me and asking to come in, but I need to make sure it's more on my terms than her terms. Good, so as soon as she faced up, I dropped the whip because I know that she's a little bit wary if I approach her with it, and I wanna make sure I can just get up there, pet her, pet on her halter, and my goal is to get that lead row back on. So I did that really quick warm up and I just wanted to see if I could kind of pick up right where we left off. She's very interesting if you watch her ears. She moves them around a lot and she's very expressive with her face and tells you exactly what she's thinking, which in my opinion is a really good thing. I really like that. It makes the horse a lot easier to read when they're expressive like that. Good, so I clipped it on and immediately she was like, uh, I gotta move away from this. So really quick, I just got her to give right there, but she's still a little bit nervous. I just want to go up and reassure her and be like, hey, it's all right. So then I ended up switching out the leads on her and you really didn't miss all too much. We just ended up over there from some leading because I wanted a longer line because I remember she was a little bit pushy and kind of leaning on the lead. She understands to move forward to the pressure, but she's kind of taking advantage of the fact that she's stronger than me and she's also in a uh, nylon halter, which means I don't have quite as much grip on there. So we're getting a couple good forward steps. What I want to do is push her to go forward because she has all that resistance backing up. And like I was saying, I put the longer lead on her because I'm expecting her to rebel a little bit more or get confused maybe and run off and away. And I want to make sure I don't let go of that lead rope. Otherwise, I'm going to start teaching her bad habits. So here, I'm using a little bit more of a sending method to get her to walk forward where I can drive her from behind with the whip and help pull forward with the lead rope and see if I can get her to step off that pressure. So here, because I don't want her to think that the whip is just a tool used to drive her, I'm just trying to pet her with it, touch her with it. So I'm gonna hold it here, hold it right at her withers and her neck until she gives in. So there, she was just running through with her shoulder. So I switched it over her head to block her side so she couldn't move forward. Luckily, she respects it like that and she's not going to walk through it. So I said, okay, change of plans. Instead of going to that left shoulder, we'll go to the right shoulder really quick. So now we were able to work our way back over to that left shoulder 
and she stood pretty good for that. And I'm going to ask her to take a couple steps forward after desensitizing her and rubbing her with it. It's really hard with a horse that has sticky feet to get them to move forward and you'll see later on in this when she decides that she really wants to lean against it I have to get a bit more firm with her because again I don't want her picking up bad habits I don't want her learning she can just run through that rope so right here you can see I'm kind of messing with that tag a little bit moving my hand around on it seeing if I can touch her cheek on that side So my goal today is to get that tag off and I'm kind of checking it out and it looks like it's really tight on there. So I'm like, uh, how am I going to be able to do this? Some of them you can't untie with your hands. You have to cut with a knife or scissors. So I'm trying to decide right now if I'm going to need to go that route or not. So you can tell she still definitely doesn't give to pressure right there just from that little amount I put on the rope. I was testing to see if she was soft when she was backing up and she didn't give at all. So now you see me get a little bit more jerky with the leading because I want to make sure that she's able to move forward off that pressure. So now I'm still just trying to drive her forward because that's the most important thing with most training is just getting a forward motioned horse. We still have a lot of resistance with the leading. She'd rather park out than actually walk forward. But I'm still getting her to move her front end, which was way more than this morning. So here I'm like, hey, we really got to move forward, girl. And the thing is, normally, yes, when you send them forward and you ask for it, even if they take off, you want to let them go because that's what you're asking for. But with leading, you can see there when I was asking her to move forward, she was really just plowing away with her shoulder. So I had to get a little bit stronger with that lead rope and ask her to turn and yield her hind end. And again, because of the type of halter I'm using, I don't have all that much leverage. So I'm probably going to look at switching that out soon. That was a lot better. Did you see how fluid that was? We were able to work on some sending. But you can still tell in this clip especially how she's going out with her shoulder. She's kind of just looking at me and avoiding the situation. This mirror I also don't fully trust to turn my back on yet. This is one reason why you can see she just kicked up right there. And now she's kind of frantic because the lead rope and she's like, I really don't want to work. I don't really want to learn this right now. So what I'm trying to do is just get in front of her, get her to switch directions, slow down her feet. Good. I'm just waiting for her. Just like you saw right there when she faced stuff, I tried to back off a little bit, but she kept going. So I'm just going to hang on and wait. Good. You can tell she's a little bit sketched out here, so I want to just reassure her, pet her face some. Nervous about that rope and me being right there. So now, my goal is going to be, again, slow down her feet and get that rope back from her. And the safest way for me to do that, especially when she's in a state like this, when she's a little bit wary, is use my I'm extension confused. of my arm, so my whip, and pull it out. I'm sorry if the footage gets a little shaky here. I'm just going to unscrew this. Uh, you can see from this that she has learned that she can kind of leap away from it. So I'm glad I have that longer line on right now. I'm really going to work on teaching her to give. So right here, I had it just looped around her neck once. And you can see it's a very soft rope and it's not really adding any extra pressure, but I can get more leverage from it. And right now what I'm getting her to do is just yield her hindquarters towards me because before we can go forward, apparently we need to work on yielding hindquarters with this mare, which is fine. Good, and it's getting much better. Right there what I did was I just jumped a little bit because I needed some forward motion from her to work with her. Good, and now we're having a quiet moment. 
because I don't want to stress her out, but I do need to get my point across that you can't bulge out with your shoulder. Good, and here, I was like, maybe she doesn't like the rope on her back, so I'm doing what I call snaking, and I'm trying to lift it up and move it so it keeps landing up and on her back. I'm waving it around some. Just trying to desensitize her while she's in motion. So my plan can change just that quick with a horse, depending on what I think they need right then. Good. So right there, when she yielded her hindquarters and she gave into that pressure right there. And right now it's just going over the top of her neck. I also don't want to fight too much with their heads because I don't want to hurt them. Um, and their heads are a little bit more fragile than their necks. So now I'm just kind of being spooky myself and lifting up my arms and moving fast and frantic because I want her to get desensitized to that too. But also, right now, as she's learning that it's not a bad thing and I'm not going to hurt her, it'll give her that forward motion to move away for me to work with yielding her hindquarters. Good, so right there, she just kind of faced up on her own. We're going back to touching. She really doesn't like when I touch that girth area, if you saw right there. That kind of is the trigger for her to move off in a way. Good, so again, I'm just trying to comfort her, her face. don't want her to get super worked up. Look how much her face is shedding right now though. She's got a lot of hair coming off of it. I'm glad that she's really comfortable with me right next to her and right in front of her but again giving the pressure and getting those body par parts working individually is so important. So we work just for a little bit more on the sending. Good that was softer. I want to end on a good note with that. Good, I like that she's looking and chewing there. She's starting to figure it out. And now I'm gonna work on some desensitizing to the scissors because they make a little bit of a noise. So I'm gonna start at her nose where she can see it and then I'm gonna hold it back near where the tag is. And this is gonna be our last thing of the day. I wanted to end on a quieter note moment. So I'm just gonna stick with her until she calms down and then I'll take away the pressure. There we go. I was trying to figure out the best way to rub it on her face because I didn't want to accidentally stab her if she moved fast. Right now I'm just getting that mane out of the way. You can see her tag is on there really, really tight. So even if it was loose on the part that goes through the little metal that holds the tag on, it'd be very difficult to get it it untied without it bugging her. And I just got the tag off. Still waiting on the name for this girl, but she's no longer tag number 7926. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for day two.